Tim Hecker, No Highs album review. Let's chat about it. Hey friends, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about this latest album from uh, Tim Hecker, Canadian electronic and ambient mastermind. He has been at it since the early 2000s and uh, since then has become an absolute staple in these genres and more. Early projects like Haunt Me and Radio Amore had me hooked to an extent. I did enjoy what he was doing here. I thought that his approach to ambient and dark ambient was very classy, very textured, very detail-oriented. But as Tim went on in his career, I only found myself enjoying his work more and more as he got darker and darker. Also took a lot more risks like on his fantastic Mirages album or his neoclassical uh, inspired album, An Imaginary Country. Um, there is also his first absolute masterpiece of an album, Harmony and Ultraviolet. Oh. And by the time Rave Death 1972 and his awesome Virgins album, Tim had become just one of the most respected names in modern experimental, uh, ambient, dark ambient, whatever you want to call it, drone as well. But I'm going to be perfectly honest, after Virgins, I, I kind of, I don't know, got a little lukewarm to Tim's music for quite some time. My hopes were just so high for the Love Streams album, and it's not a bad album, but I just kind of found myself being underwhelmed at the end of the day. Kanoyo had so many great, great, great elements to it. I thought that Tim's instrumentation on this album was one of his most ambitious projects. Look into it if you haven't. Uh, but there were also moments on here where I just kind of found myself shrugging. But I did like his shortly followed up Anoyo project. I thought this the sheer beauty of this album and the intensity, the quiet intensity to it was one of his more interesting works um, in quite some time. But it's been a while since we've heard from Tim. And, you know, leading up to this album, he dropped one eight-minute single. And I thought that this, this was just kind of exactly where I wanted to hear Tim right now. And a lot of this album is just that. This album starts off with monotony, and it is a very tense, unbearably almost tense, uh, sort of synth odyssey of a track. You're going to hear a lot of those on this album. And I mean, Tim has never really shied away from kind of throwing you right into whatever he's doing on an album. This is no different. This is an eight-minute track. But it is all in the details, my friends. This track is incredibly layered. It is tense. It is beautiful. It is really dense and cinematic as well. It's really unforgiving, but absolutely gorgeous as well. It also has a drama to Tim's music that I haven't heard here in years. It is just so serene, and maybe that's just because I love icy sort of progressive synth odysseys. Uh, but here we are, and I'm just so happy with this. Right off the bat, I feel more attached to this than any of the last few Tim projects. And listen, this is by no means an easy listen. You gotta turn your brain on for this thing, but it's worth it. Glissalia is really good too. This track is even more desolate, more intense, more cinematic, but it's also just as unforgiven and just icy, icy cold. It's also jam-packed with a lot of emotions, more emotions than you'd probably think, but that's something that Tim has always excelled in. But this sort of progressive synth journey of an album that Tim is embarking on here, man, it's, it's scratching itches I didn't even knew that I had. It's one of the shorter tracks here, but it's very well coordinated, well detailed, it just feels like a complete thought. On the other hand, Total Garbage is a really tragic tune. This almost comes off as like a funeral dirge by way of Tim Hecker. It's very, very bleak, only brought to life by some very tragic saxophone playing and some more synth work. But I would argue that a lot of this album is some of his more, I don't know, inspired work in a while. And I love how just by the end of this track, it just drones out into complete nothingness. Yes... And Lotus Light, uh, the one single, if you want to call it that, dropped from this album, uh, is a hell of a track. Hearing this leading up to this album, I felt like I was discovering Tim's work again for the first time. The icy cold synths are just so powerful, it brings the tension and the drama that I need in his music. But it just goes so much further than that. I feel like this is like, I don't know, like a forgotten theme from some 80s sort of gritty uh, post-apocalyptic sci-fi movie, but it's so good. I mean, a lot of this album, you could you could definitely say, has some John Carpenterisms, uh, but that is just fine by me. Waves of synths, this is just hard to place atmosphere. Tim's commitment to this, 
Um, it, it makes for a hell of a picture. When Tim is just focused on sound like he is on this album, uh, he's unstoppable. Uh, this track is miraculous, and it's not an easy listen. It is almost nine minutes, but I, I definitely would say it's worth it. Yeah, I truly do believe this is one of Tim's most compelling and ambitious works uh, since Virgins. Now, there are some ideas on this album that I just... I don't know, I feel like could have just been done with a little bit more fleshing out. Like Winter Cop, for example, and it's a shame, because from a distance, this track is gorgeous. It's also one of the more drone-oriented tracks, but it also just doesn't progress. Like I said, it's one of the shorter tracks on this album. I just feel like it needed a few more minutes to really breathe. And with Pulse Depression, I have to give credit where it's due because it is a very serene track. It's one of the more beautiful moments here. But that just comes at a big cost because it's not nearly as encapsulating as some of the other tracks here. Uh, I don't know what it is, but this atmosphere on this track just doesn't really hit me nearly as hard. It just kind of, I don't know, it feels like a really underwhelming track from one of his better albums. But on top of that, it just uh, talk about an incomplete thought. This is cutting room floor material, and Tim's Tim's a lot better than that. And since suppression, I think it's the worst track here. I do commend just how tragic this track comes off. But this is easily the most boring and unnecessary track here. Like it has potential, but it's such a short, you know, unthought out tune that just doesn't really go anywhere. Outside of that, though. Let me, last week on this blog, I, I dealt with some real stinkers of albums, and I was kind of in a bad mood, but this album pulled me right back in, and spoiler alert, this is going to be a, this is going to be a good week here, um, but I am very glad to say I'm very much so back in Tim's good graces. In Your Mind is awesome. I mean, this has been a very grim, very tense, a very dramatic album, but this thing's, this takes it to the next level. Between the fluttering sacks in the background, the synths that don't sit still, and this tr just, I don't know, just this really like hazy like you don't know where you are feeling to this track it makes it very powerful i mean look at tracks like winter cop and then look at this this track is a slim trim three minute track but it is a complete thought it has tons of character and it goes where it's going it once again sounds like an unused theme from like an 80s sci-fi flick but i mean that in the best way just know that there's absolutely no hope in sight but it's also kind of beautiful Monotony 2 features heavy use of Mr. Colin Stetson. Love Colin Stetson. Big fan. I mean, this to me is just a match made in heaven, especially if you listen to Colin's um, solo stuff. It takes this already very, very bleak, very desolate wasteland and just gives it some heft, some bulk to it. It's honestly one of the most textured and busy tracks here. But with just as much going on as there is, there's still an unbelievable, and I mean unbelievable attention to detail, and that's what makes me happy. And then we have Anxiety. This is a great title. This is one of the most tense and unforgiving tracks here, synth after synth, just detail after detail. It is all done so well. Just the layering on everything is so unbelievably immaculate. It also brings in some electroacoustic elements, which is something that Tim's touched down on in the past. It's such a simple tune, but it's so hypnotic, so vast. It's an amazing example of what Tim can do with just so little, and that's always impressed me. And yes, the eight-minute runtime on this track is completely justified. And Living Spa Water is a really cool finale as well. It has a sense of mystery and mysticism that I have not heard on any other part of this album. That's saying something. It's this shimmering drone piece that is, you know, very cold and unforgiving, much like a lot of this album, but it's also alive and textured and beautiful at points. It's sunny and kaleidoscopic in a weird way as well, but for the entire seven minutes, I'm just, I'm glued to this. And when even more synths show up in the final half of this track, honestly, it makes for some of the most euphoric moments on this entire album. Yeah, this thing is really good, especially because I've been so lukewarm on Tim's music for uh, quite a while, more time than I expected to be. But this is one of his most synth-driven, cinematic, intense releases in a while, but that personally is where I like like to hear him. It's unbelievably textured and detailed, like some of his best work, but it's just unforgiving and desolate and cold. Uh, there's a lot of progressive synth work, some electroacoustic stuff too, with all the drones you can handle, and a really great feature from Colin Stetson. Like, what else can you ask for? No, this album's not perfect, and, you know, some of the shorter tunes lead to some really, you know, unended ideas. I don't know what better way to say it, but still, I'm back in Tim's good graces. I'm very happy with this album feeling a decent eight on this album but let me know what you all think down below if you like this video be sure to give us a like give us a subscribe and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future and until next time 
have a great day, friends.